Early on in recovery, Samantha and I hit this point of contention that I would later realize was incredibly common, but for us, it was really excruciating, mostly for me, oddly enough. Uh, not inherently for me, but because of my reaction. And I'll explain uh, more on that. The moment came where Rick asked me a question. He said, Samuel, let me ask you, when do you think is the best time to work on your marriage? And I just kind of looked at him like I normally did, which was, okay, get ready. I'm going to be <laughs> uh, made to look like a fool, so bring it. What's the answer, Rick? And he said, the best time to work on your marriage is when things are going well. And I looked at him like, seriously? Like, why would you want to interrupt the momentum? Why would you want to interrupt the good flow that we're having to do recovery work? And there is this moment where I think the betrayed says, hey, things are going well. Let's talk about things that are infidelity related. Um, and at that same moment, the unfaithful spouse who is kind of wrestling with their own shame, their perpetual shame or their confusion says, oh my gosh, we were just having a great time. We were just enjoying an awesome dinner not talking about infidelity, flooding, triggers, the other woman, emotions, pain, hurt, uh, you know, anything of that nature. Why do we need to talk about this now? And it's like you were going 65 and pulled the e-brake and the airbags deployed and you just hit this wall. And it's very normal. It's incredibly frustrating for the unfaithful, but what's even more frustrating is the reaction of the betrayed based upon the reaction of the unfaithful. Because the unfaithful goes, oh, do we have to talk about this? And the betrayed goes, son of a, they just immediately go, yes, we need to talk about this because it's not going away. And I've got to be able to talk about this. And when can I talk to you about this? And I can never talk to you about this. It's never the right time. The reason I know those statements so well is because Samantha shouted them at me, yelled them at me, whispered them at me in front of other people sometimes. So let me help you with a few things that I learned the hard way. Hopefully you learned them the easier way. Why would you want to work or why would you want to do recovery work when things are going well? Let me just tell you, you're going to have to do recovery work. It's not going away. It's there. He or she may be smiling, the betrayed spouse, laughing, having a good time. But rest assured, the pain, the sorrow, the struggle, the grenade is there, waiting for the right time to explode. So it's going to be there for anywhere from maybe a year to as many as two, sometimes three years. There's going to be that grenade. Now, the side note or footnote is the grenade will always be there when you do something stupid. So if you think that you're going to not answer your phone or have a weird email come across or have somebody flirt with you or stare at a member of the opposite sex too long, you're basically pulling the pin on a grenade that will always be there. So that's just a little footnote for you. But let me get back to the center of the conversation, which is why would you want to do recovery work when things are going well? Well, for starters, when things are going well, there's a positive momentum there. I don't know if you're like me, but oftentimes, even now, if I get in a fight with Samantha, I immediately have this moment of why didn't I talk about this when we were going well? I could have addressed this when there wasn't so much tension and hurt and pain and smoke to have to push through. When there is positive momentum, the unfaithful is going, I don't want to ruin this. I just want to enjoy this. The betrayed is going, I hope that he or she doesn't think that there isn't still stuff that we need to talk about, but it's nice to just have a good dinner or see a movie or take a drive or take a walk. So when there is a positive momentum, when there's good, healthy kind of uh, vibe or whatever you want to call it, there's an ability to get right to the issue 
where you don't have to alternatively, when there's a fight, when there's tension, when there's flooding, then you're automatically, as an unfaithful, you're on the defensive, or even as a betrayed, you're on the defensive. So now you can't really get to center of the to the center of the issue. You have to fight about the smoke and mirrors and all the uh, kind of uh, outside issues before you can get to the central core issue, which might be defensiveness, or it might be um, an unawareness or a lack of awareness for what the other spouse is dealing with. But when there's a fight or when there's flooding, now you're trying to do this dance and you're hashing out all these other kind of micro issues, but you can't get to the major issue. Another reason to do recovery work when things are going well is your spouse is more responsive to you, meaning they're not on the hairpin trigger maybe. They're not kind of so emotionally running at five or 10,000 RPMs that the slightest bit of adjustment or correction is going to send them really. No, when there's a good vulnerability, if you will, you can at that moment begin to say, you know, I was thinking the other day or I was praying the other day and I know that you sometimes think I feel this or that I X, but really I don't. And let me give you a good example. One day, Samantha and I were walking in the park. The kids were much smaller, so they kind of ran off and they were in the playground. And it was just a beautiful day. Uh, we were having a good talk. And she said, you know, and I was like, oh no, here it comes. She says, you know, I know sometimes you can feel hopeless at my reactions or that you can get really offended or full of shame that I'm having a bad day, but I need you to know I, I'm not attacking you. I'm just kind of venting and I'm just sharing. And so when you get defensive, it pushes me away and it makes days like this harder. But when you just hear me out and don't get so reactive, it really blesses me and makes me feel safe. As we were walking in that moment, I was like, I went, my emotions went from, oh no, here it comes, to, oh, uh, to, oh my gosh, this is phenomenal. And so once I got the revelation and once I learned at that moment, I said to Samantha, I said, man, that makes total sense. You know, I, I understand that and, and I want you to feel safe. Like I want you to have wonderful days like this with me and I just don't want to mess them up. And we had a great moment together. And the whole day was really set in a wonderful direction because of that moment, how she felt safe enough to share and how I finally, for one of the first times, reacted in a safe way for her. You see, when things are going well, your processing time is quicker. You can process information or feedback because you're not offended or pissed or angry or flooded. You see, in my situation, and this might be like yours, Samantha was constantly worried or paranoid that when we were having a good day or a good couple of days, that I would use those days and take advantage of her and that I would never want to talk about recovery work or do recovery work. Again, she was constantly going, oh no, I've, we've had a couple of days, we've had sex, now is he going to just think that everything's golden? And so Rick had taught me, just because you have a few days, don't think that the grenade isn't there. Don't think that the smoke isn't still there. Enjoy the good days, but know that bad days are going to come. Just like when you're having bad days, man, work through the bad days, but know the good days are going to come. The best time to work on your marriage is when there's positive momentum. If you, the unfaithful, want to absolutely win points with your betrayed spouse, when things are going well, have a moment where you say, you know, I was thinking, I was praying, I was reading, I was watching a blog the other day, and I really learned X, and it helped me to see Y, and I really hope that I'm helping you in your recovery from what I'm learning. My caveat to you, though, after all that I've said, 
is there's this one little caveat that says this. There's moments where you just want to escape. So especially for you, the unfaithful, be careful because there may be a moment where the betrayed says, look, I want to go dancing. I want to go for a drive. I want to go watch sports. I want to go do something. And we're going to have a great time. And we're not going to talk about infidelity, recovery, Samuel, Rick, the website. No, we're going to pretend and act like we're normal, like everybody else, as if there is such a thing. We're just going to enjoy ourselves. Don't take advantage of this moment. Don't try and think that everything's fine. And don't think that I won't have some bad days. But tonight, we're not doing recovery work other than just we are working on having a great time. There are moments that you must do that. And you have to know when to do recovery work when things are going well. And then there's sometimes you just have to enjoy the moment. It's still recovery work. You're just not calling it recovery work. You're just recovering. 